Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about thermal sensing or temperature sensing. So I have a little demo circuit that will detect the heat of my finger. So if I apply my finger to the sensor, you can see it turns on the LED. It's triggering the LED just by the heat of my finger. So it's kind of like a little touch switch. Even though there's other ICs out there that will do a better job for touch switching. Now I'm using a diode as the temperature sensor in this circuit. So normally we associate a diode to rectify an AC signal into a DC voltage. But in this case I'm using a diode to detect temperature change. Okay, the diodes that I used in my demo circuit are the 1N4148 or the 1N914. And these are sometimes called switching diodes or small signal diodes. Now these are very easy to obtain and very inexpensive. Now if we take one of these diodes and we forward bias it, we apply a positive voltage across the diode so we get enough current flowing through the diode to turn it on, we will get a 0.6 volts DC drop across the diode. Now this voltage drop across the diode will vary with temperature. It will vary minus 2 millivolts per degree Celsius. So it has a negative temperature coefficient. So for every 1 degree Celsius of increase, we'll get a minus 2 millivolt drop across the diode. Now if we take a reverse bias diode, like a Zener diode, in this voltage regulator circuit. So we have a Zener diode and we input a 12 volts into this regulator circuit with a 9 volt Zener diode. We'll get a 9 volt output on, on this voltage regulator circuit when the diode goes into its breakdown or avalanche mode. Now the voltage across this Zener diode will increase 2 millivolts per degree Celsius. So this will be a positive temperature coefficient. So if we take this circuit and we add a diode into the circuit, like we see here, now the Zener diode will increase 2 millivolts per degree Celsius and the diode will decrease 2 millivolts per degree Celsius. So they'll cancel each other out so we'll have a temperature compensated circuit. Now we could use the same idea in a common emitter amplifier where we use four bias resistors to bias uh, the transistor into a Q point where the collector will be half VCC and it will, it will swing above and below half VCC. Now as temperature increases the, the voltage across the base emitter junction which is basically a diode diode will decrease and will change the Q point of the of the common emitter amplifier. So we could add a diode as we see here which will compensate the circuit so as the temperature increases it will keep the Q point centered. So we could use diodes as temperature sensing and also for temperature compensation. Okay back to my demo circuit we'll have a closer look on the operation of this circuit. Now the heart of the circuit is an op amp, a CE3140 which we could see here and it's configured as a comparator. Now the three diodes on the bottom are my sensing diodes, so they'll sense the temperature of my finger. And the three diodes on the top are my temperature compensation diodes. Now they track the ambient temperature of the room. So if I do not touch my sensing uh, diodes, and I increase the temperature of the room, if I turn on the heat in the room, it will not trigger the circuit because the three diodes on the top are tracking the ambient temperature of the room. Only when the temperature increases above ambient a certain, uh, certain amount, it will trigger the comparator and it will turn on the LED. So we'll have a look at the schematic diagram of the circuit and get a better understanding how the circuit works. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. And it's powered by 10 volts, that's our VCC, and the CE3140 op amp is configured as a comparator. You can see there's no feedback paths. Now we have a voltage divider of two 10k ohm resistors which will split the VCC power supply in half. So we'll get 5 volts fed into the non-inverting input of the op amp, pin 3. Now we also have another voltage divider consisting of a 4.7k ohm resistor and three diodes and then three diodes and a 5k pot. Now if we adjust the pot to 4.7k ohms we'll have another voltage divider which will split the VCC in half which will be fed into pin 2. Now as the ambient temperature of the room increases or decreases, the voltage uh, drops across the three diodes on each leg will also increase or decrease the same amount. So no matter what the ambient temperature of the room is, this point here will always be constant. It won't change. But now we can adjust the pot, the 5k pot, so the pin 2 is just a shade higher, a little bit higher than pin 3, a few millivolts, so pin 6 will go low and LED will be off. And that's how we calibrate it. Now when we put our finger across the three diodes on the bottom, the voltage drop across the diodes will drop. That voltage drop on pin 2 will go lower than pin 3. And the output uh, will go, of the comparator will go high, which will turn on the LED. So you can see how the compensation 
diodes are kind of tracking the, the ambient temperature of the room and only when we put our finger or we apply heat to the bottom three diodes which will trigger the circuit and turn on the LED. Okay now you know how my little demo circuit works. Now if I hold my finger on the diode sensors for a long time and heat them up and then release my finger it takes a while for the circuit to shut off. If I do that again and then touch the ambient sensing diodes and fool the circuit into thinking the ambient temperature has, has risen I could, I could bring it down quicker. So she comes down quicker. So that, that's, that proves that my tracking circuit is working. So that's a little demo on how you could use diodes for temperature sensing and also to use a diode in a circuit and place it in a certain area where, where you could temperature compensate a circuit and make it more stable.